We are going to talk about the procedures as well as the safety measurements that you have to write in your lab report. When it comes to procedures, it is extremely important that you tell me details. Think of you telling a very dumb person, like a very dummy person, that you have to tell them step by step. That's the procedure. And it can be written in bullet points or in paragraph. It doesn't have to be bullet points. But I prefer that it's bullet points because in bullet points, you can see if you miss out on a step. That's very important. Now, what exactly do you do? Do I have to also talk about how I prepare my solutions? Yes, you do have to write how you prepare your solutions. It must be written there. So you have the preparation of the solutions. Now, if you didn't do it and it was basically given by the lab assistant in your school, it's fine. Then you don't have to because you're not the one that prepared. But if you actually did the preparations, then you must write those solutions in there and how you prepared. And then, of course, when it comes to the equipments, you go step by step. Now, remember that there is no limitations on the steps. It can be 1 to 14, 1 to 5, but it has to be very detailed. Now, one of the most key important things that there must be written in your procedure, besides putting all the steps and explaining step by step, what I mean by step by step, that means you got to say get a beaker. You don't just say get a beaker. Get a 250 millimeters beaker. Put water. No, put 200 millimeters of water. Put on the temperature in there. No, put the 35 degrees. That means get very details on these guys. Also, equipment. Don't just say get the measuring scale. No, give the name exactly of the measuring scales. Or the vineyard probe. Talk very much details, including units, uncertainties, all the information in there. But the biggest thing is you have to mention that there has to be about five trials for every independent variable. Because if you don't mention right here, If you don't mention that you have to have enough trials in order to get sufficient data, you're not going to get the point. So the first and most important thing is, obviously, you have to have five trials. So let's say you have, you're working on temperatures, right? So let's say you have temperature 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, right? These are the five variations of the dependent. That means there must be five trials for the 0, five trials for the 10, five trials for the 20, five trials for the 30, five trials for the 40. So in total, there will be 25 datas. That's the minimum. Do not do three files. There has to be five trials for all of them. And that has to mention in your procedure. So usually it can be like something like this one right here in the bottom says, repeat step one to 10 with the other temperatures, 20, 30, 40, in order to get enough data or to get sufficient data. When you write that, the examiner will be like, ah, that person did it, got the points. Make sure you mention that. In the procedure, you can also put some diagram label. So let's say if you created a completely new design of a lab section, drawings can get you points there too. Now, if you didn't do anything designs where you're just using a certain machine that is very common, you don't have to put those pictures in there. You're saving yourself some time. But if it's something completely designable that you have created uniquely, it is extremely important that you draw it and label it and put it up there just like you see this apparatus right here. You can place it there in order to make it easier for the explanations of the procedures. You can get points for that. Just to understand that. So that was for the procedures. Now let's talk about the safety, the ethical, and the environmental safeties that you need to go through. Now, what are the difference between the three? When we talk about safety examples, we're talking about the equipments. Like if you're working with glass, right? You got to be very careful. You got to wear the goggles. You got to wear gloves if you're going with chemicals. You got to put your hair up. You know, you have to talk about the safety measurements that we do in every lab every day of the life when we're going to classrooms. So these are different ways of you doing with safety. When it comes to ethical, this has to do more with if we're playing with animals, plants, you know, any other organisms. Like what is the ethical about it? Making sure that you're not hurting them, making sure that you're not using too many plants, which that means you're hurting so many plants. Don't do that. Okay. You got to be very careful with that. So that's the ethical. And then students have a problem with the ethical and the environment. What's the difference? The environment, it's basically how are you going to deal with with place situations where, let's say, you play with toxics. You're just going to throw it in the trash bin or you're going to throw it in a way that is healthier. So you have to look at that. Or you're using a lot of plastic. How are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to put it to recycle because that way I'm showing an environmental ethical impact there. So this is how you do with the safety measurements. So this is the end of the research section, research basically criteria in which you have from research question, 
Then you have the background, the hypothesis, independent, dependent variables, the control variables, the procedures, and the safety measure. So that's one section of the lab which you got it right here and you're probably getting those six points. Now, on the next section, we got to talk about the data analysis and how to get the raw and the process data and I'll see you there. But remember, with an ARB, you can get that seven. I see you on the next video.